What's so special about this? And what's so important about this? One of them is a fundamental motion we need to get really good at in the right hand. And the other one is a classic piccolo phrase in the key of A major that we see all the time in Spanish guitar. And they're both living inside this great introduction to an Allegrius by Sabicas that I'm going to show you how to play right now. There's a lot of great stuff in there. Before we dive in and learn how to play this, let me do the whole thing all the way through. Uh, but first, I'm tuned just a little bit flat uh, because he is on the recording, but he has a capo on the fifth fret, which makes it sound like a D major chord. Um, I don't have a capo. I know some of you might not have a capo. I can't even find my capo. That's another reason why I'm not using it today. Uh, but actually, when we do put a capo on the fifth fret, that's so high that we're gonna have to get way, way up here. Some of you might find that uncomfortable. It makes it a little bit easier to play, except for having to get that high. But I'm gonna do it today with no capo at all. And here is the the whole introduction. of A major here. Nothing weird about the chords. Um, there's some interesting stuff happening, but nothing too groundbreaking, but some really, really great technique stuff in here. And this is why I'm showing it to you. Now at the beginning, I said, what's so special about this? That first arpeggio that he plays and why I think it's so special. It's one of the most important things you need to be able to do with your right hand on nylon string guitar, flamenco, classical, whatever we're talking about. And that is the double arpeggio. So they call this a double arpeggio because this would be the forward arpeggio. I'm going to the floor, thumb, index, middle, ring. Now if I go backwards, that's called the reverse arpeggio, although it's not exactly reverse. It's literally reverse would be ring, middle, index, thumb. But what it is is thumb first and then ring, middle, index. That's the reverse arpeggio. But if we kind of put them together, we get the double arpeggio. So it's like the best of both worlds where we can really work on those two different arpeggios at once. So the better we are at the double arpeggio, the better we are at the forward and the reverse, hopefully. And this is like a fundamental thing you should do every day of your life, as I do. We can articulate it rhythmically different ways. We can go da 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 in threes, or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can put the accent wherever you want, especially when you're practicing, like put it on the index finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Really weird, you're not gonna probably see that in the song, but that's a great practice working on accenting different fingers. But in this song, that's gonna be pretty normal. There are six tuplets, we're playing six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we do it again. But he's putting some cool little harmony things in there. So let's look at this chord. Okay, like I said, we're in the key of A major, so here's an A major chord. Luckily though, in this position, we don't have to play it that way as a bar. That would be what we could say is the E form. We can play a little snippet of it like this. And if you've played a song like, let's say, Solea, we see this F chord all the time, and we do things like this. We play around with these notes, great little melodies happening in there. You can actually do that, um, sounds completely different, but you can do the same exact kind of thing with the same exact shape over an A chord like this. They're just notes in the key, right? So we have A major, put your pinky here on the seventh fret for F sharp. Now you can relax this finger and we have an A major sixth chord. Really nice sound, kind of a South American sound. I, I think so. So we have two double arpeggios. Now put your first finger here on the root and this is the conclusion of this measure. Although we could also say that this is a quarter of the measure in flamenco. Remember we're counting the 12. So this is one, two, three, one measure in three, four time, or a quarter of a measure in 12, four time, if we're counting the 12. One, two, three. Notice in my right hand, I've got everything planted. We could call this full planting. Everything's down, so important. And he plays this, if you listen to the song, uh, he's playing so fast and it's so clean and it's so precise. Um, and the way that he's doing it, I think, is he's got all these fingers down and we're just peeling them off. Everything's ready to go here. I do a thumb rest stroke. I think that's important for the first arpeggio because now, look, my thumb is ready to go for the next string. When I actually do play that in a second, you don't have to um, do a rest stroke there. I don't think so. I'm going rest stroke, peel these guys off. That's a double arpeggio. Then do it again here. Look, I'm planting again. I did another full plant. And then here we play the thumb and the ring at the same time. I'm doing a rest stroke with a thumb, free stroke with the ring finger at the same time.
So that double, double arpeggio, because it happens twice, happens twice. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the next measure, or you could say on beats seven, eight, nine, we go. Okay, so my index finger's down here. I'm using my middle finger here. You don't have to do that. I kind of switched over to continuing using the thumb all the way to this string. So I'm going thumb and middle and then index and then take this index finger off on the left hand and go thumb and middle again and then index. That's just one way to finger that. So the whole measure would look like this. Okay, now we're gonna to go to an E7 chord, kind of. So in Allegrius, we very often begin on the one chord, which would be A, and we'll go to the five chord, which in this key is E7. Okay, so it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On the ten is where very often we see um, resolutions or chord changes and things like that. This is like the opposite of a resolution um, because that chord wants to resolve back to a major. So to get that, we're going to take the pinky that we already had down and slide it up two frets. And actually your ring finger too, you can keep on the four string. So slide them up two frets, put your index finger here. And that is an E7 chord, except he's going to add this F note. So what is an F doing in an E7 chord? You could say that this is F diminished seventh now. This is a chord we could move around three frets at a time. Just an interesting little harmonic thing we can do. Although because the low E string is still being played, we technically would call this E7 flat nine. So this last measure of three, four time goes like this, 10, 11, 12. And that is called a ramate. That's the closing of the 12 uh, beats here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And right there, my thumb played all the way to the second string with a simultaneous golpe. So I did a thumb rest stroke and golpe at the same time. Even that, is tricky. You can always leave that out if you want to. So again, we have. Now keep that chord and we're going to do more arpeggios, only this time it's not as demanding because he's not going to play them as fast. We're going to play triplets mainly. So we go. So if you can handle this, this is a piece of cake. We're just going triple it, triple it, da da. He starts though with a couple of quick 16th notes going one and a triple it. Um, that's just a tiny, tiny minor detail that we don't even have to replicate, but going. So this was very much like this romate where we went 10, 11, 12, only now we're back on this chord. And again, your pinky and your ring finger, you can drag them down. And then we have this uh, guy. We did a really quick forward arpeggio right there. I've got a full plant and I just peel them off. Thumb and then index middle ring, nice and quick. And the reason we're landing with our thumb there is just stronger and louder and more aggressive. And we do it with a golpe for even more aggressiveness. Now here comes a really cool part, a really great practice. And you see this kind of stuff all the time as well. And we're not even on this thing that I said we really have to know. Um, but, but this is really great. We're gonna play a bar and do some arpeggios. We have a little problem here that we're gonna see in a second. Uh, but this is all uh, chords, again, in the key of A major. So we have an A major chord. Instead of playing it this way, we'll play it like this. We're not even playing the fifth string. So or we're gonna use our pinky to play some melody notes. And I go down to this one. Notice how I didn't move my ring finger. We had this. And now we have this. That's just an E major chord, see this? The C form of E. We know E is the five chord, that's already in the key. Have you ever played Crazy Train before? Same exact chord progression. So Crazy Train and Sabikas have a little bit of a overlap here. Only we're gonna bar it, we're gonna go. So for this first chord, we had our pinky on this high B note on the seventh fret. I'm doing a reverse arpeggio now. So this has everything we need arpeggio wise. Thumb, ring, middle, index, and then now go back to the floor. So that's like a double arpeggio backwards, which is very weird, but great. We're going to the ceiling and then back rather than to the floor and then back to the ceiling. So a double arpeggio would have been this, but now we're going. These are all 16th notes. One E and a, two E and a. Now right there, that caused us to, because he's putting in this melody note, we're playing the same string twice in a row. We can take our ring finger and play twice like this. 
that's tough and maybe not ideal, but I guess that's probably what he's doing. The workaround for that, which is actually harder, would be this. See my middle finger, pulled it off, and then my index there. That's just in the interest of, of continuing to alternate, but it's actually weirder. It's kind of a, maybe a classical guitarist would want to do that, but I'm just gonna go like this. Ring, ring. So double ring finger. Now go down to this chord, which we said is a way of playing an E chord, except G sharp is in the bass. That's in the chord. This is an inversion of E, but all the same stuff and the same note here, actually. A little more of a stretch. So bend your pinky and use the side of your pinky, not don't be flat on it because your pinky normally falls that way anyway. Do it again down here, except instead of playing this note, play it on the fourth fret, which is G sharp. And then we have an A chord like this. So there's a lot of guide fingers going on here. We have this finger, we slide it down here, play A this way. Just the flamenco way to play an A chord, right? And we do the arpeggio again, except we slow down at the end of it because this is the ramate again. One E and a two and three and, or rather in flamenco, we would say 10, 11, 12. Add more thumb there for more aggressiveness. So going back to this. whatever's more comfortable to you. Now we have the final four measures, or really one flamenco measure in Allegria, so 12 beats. And this is where we're gonna see this phrase that is so, so common and that we really wanna memorize. And um, we see variations of it all the time. Um, but before we get there, we're going back to this. Only now, instead of this inversion of a D major chord, tuck your pinky under here, and we have a B minor chord. You also can play with your pinky off. Sounds a little bit jazzy, it's like a B minor seven chord. He's probably not doing that. He's gonna probably play a more straight ahead, non-jazzy chord. B minor like this. Pinky comes off though, and we have that pull off again, just like we did earlier. Now this finger takes us down, really guides us down, literally what we call a guide finger, down to A again. There's our reverse double arpeggio. Thumb, ring, middle, index, thumb again to the floor, and then we dive right into this. That's the scale I totally want you to know. So before we um, run through the whole thing and do all that again, let's memorize this. We're in the key of A major. Such a common and important scale. I'm visualizing an A major chord with a G form there. We could call that a G form because it looks like a G chord. There's G, move it up two frets. Now it's A. But we could also say it's a piece of the A form. The A form looks like this. Just These are just pictures that move around. That's what's so cool about the guitar, or uh, one of the good things about it, and also a bad thing. <laughs> like piano players, they only have one way to play an A chord, but uh, we have a picture that we move around. Can't do that on a piano. But here's the scale I want you to see. I'm gonna do a combination of these two positions. Position shift right here. Leave your index finger down as an anchor and kind of swivel around on that G sharp note. That really helps you play it faster and gives you some stability there. Uh, another reason to do it is if you take it off, we might accidentally hear the open G string, which is not in this key and, and will sound wrong because it is wrong. Well, in the key of A major, it's wrong. We'll leave it down. Now come back up as a practice. So the open B string is our ticket to move. Right there, right there. Such an important scale, you should mess around with that. We see it all the time in all these different variations, but they're really, really similar. That's another phrase very similar to this. Okay, so the whole last passage looks like this. This is a really fun and beautiful intro, and if you get nothing else out of this tutorial, we just want to know what a double arpeggio is and be able to see this scale shape because you're going to use it all the time. Let's play the whole thing now nice and slow.
Subikas has some really cool traditional stuff, and you got to really, I think, um, understand and be able to play the traditional stuff before you even think about doing um, modern flamenco, Paco de Lucia, certainly, and all Vicente Amigo and all these guys. That stuff is really awesome and much harder to play, I think. Um, but if you don't have this kind of in, under your fingers and in your head, you're never gonna, gonna, I think, be able to play that modern stuff. So if you're new to this double arpeggio idea, check out this video where I show you a study I play every day of my life, which is nothing but the double arpeggio. Such an important motion, as I said, and it really encapsulates almost everything that we really ever do arpeggio-wise in the right hand. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. You can join my membership to get all my tabs, all of my courses, community meetups, all kinds of stuff. Check it out at theversatileguitarist.com slash membership.